The 6.5 is back and we're on the road in Miami, Florida here at Cloudera. Sales kickoff, Elevate 25. That's fiscal year 25. Dan, it's been a great show so far. You, are, uh, you and I were on stage. We've heard some incredible product testimonials or customer testimonials. Yeah. And, and what they've done with this amazing technology. Yeah, there's some top secret customer testimonials. Why do we can't and, even and use the name? That, that weren't here, but as analysts, one of the things we do love to see is product fit, product yeah. market fit. And of course, every company right now has got this kind of AI story. Everyone's got a, we are the AI company. And there's a lot of his story uh, that needs to go into building a product that's actually ready for the AI opportunity of today. And so while we've spent a lot of time talking to CEO Charles Sansbury, and you know, I hope everyone out there goes and checks out that video. Pat, I know something you and I love to talk about is product. Listen, I mean, okay, I'm an ex-product guy, so I like products. Yeah. So, and it's, it's great to get right from the head of products, Dipto. Welcome to the 6.5, thanks for coming on. It's great to be here. Yeah, absolutely. That's your uh, first time on the show. I think we met at Evolve in uh, New York, but you were like five minutes <laughs> into the role. <laughs> that's, that? that's actually accurate. It was <laughs> literally that long in the role. Evolve was the best way of getting to know our, not just new hire orientation, but meeting the customers, exactly. not just the employees. So it's good to see you settling in. Um, you know, we spent some time talking with Charles about his sort of investment-led growth and kind of where he sees taking the product. But we'd love to get your angle now. You know, you're taking it a layer deeper. You're really, you know, figuring out how to innovate on the products, meet that market fit that we spoke about. Where are you at with that? Uh, talk a little bit about your planning. Talk a little bit about your strategy. Talk about where you're at. Expand upon what uh, you know what Charles was talking about. So the product strategies sound, we have to execute on these in a way that it adds differentiating value beyond the competitive landscape and really adding value that is durable for our customers. We are focusing on, you know, we have big, like three different themes. We have four pillars of investments. Um, we're gonna have to modernize our lake house, which already is uh, a industry leading solution. Um, we're going to be adding like data mesh, data, data, data mesh capabilities, and also a data fabric. Uh, you'll be hearing, and that will coexist. That'll be the first area of investment. We're also investing in AI significantly, as I joined Cloudera from Amazon, uh, where the AI was really the lingua franca of just about adding the AI into everything. This market is primed for growth because. Data management is only 30 years old, but what's making it contemporary, you know, really new is data has gravity. It will have to stay where it is when you have petabytes and data under management. It's the compute that has to be brought closer to it. And people are scrambling to figure out how to execute on that strategy because our customers with petabytes and exabytes under management, they're looking at us to do the forklift for them so that it's easy lift for the users. That's the second area you're gonna see AI, particularly gen, gen, generative AI, but also broader AI coming into play. We also have the modernization and acceleration of the cloud solutions where we will have a hybrid cloud for just about all our mature customers who have already gone to the journey on the cloud. It's not like they're learning, they're on that journey. On that journey, the most important option that looking for from us is to how do they make these workloads hybrid? How do they yeah. use cloud as an operating model beyond using it as a compute model or a finance or a CapEx, OpEx model? They're looking at how to use cloud to run their business. Sometimes it makes sense to have the workload on the you know public cloud. Sometimes it makes sense to have it on premise, and those the businesses are making those decisions. Our job as a, their partner is to make it flexible for them. I love that. I love the talk about the hybrid cloud. Um, <laughs> you're definitely making moves uh, un under the goal that you want to be the vendor of choice for their cloud data platforms, and. I think I heard a phraseology, I don't know if you used it or not, let me make sure I get this right. The nexus of trusted data that's under your control um, and how that sets you apart. So how do those two come together, right? Because right now, you know, you're the nexus of, of data on-prem, you want to be the customer choice in the cloud. How do those two work together? 
this nexus is really this I call this the trifecta this, ne this is this nexus of these things coming together creates such a unique opportunity for us because the workloads that are mature workloads they already have a known pattern of how they get spawned off and executed the new workloads that are getting added is creating a strain on the IT departments because very few IT departments budgets are increasing it's really their workloads are increasing complexity is increasing, their budgets are most cases the same or decreasing. So how do we provide our customers efficiency and effectiveness? Those are two different things. Yeah. Efficiency is how do you do the things you, that you do well? And then effectiveness is how do you do the right things? Right. And that's why I've told the team that we have to slow down to go fast and make sure that we offer customers choices so that some of their workloads can be by default on-prem, spike it to the cloud. Other or workloads will be by default on the cloud, occasionally brought on-prem to right. run an LLM like compute intensive job. And the third kind of workload, which is even more interesting, and Cloudera will be the company that gives its customers the choice, is when you want to have storage on-prem, compute off-prem, or vice versa, storage off-prem, compute on-prem. Those workload characteristics are gonna drive the economic value for our customers, because we wanna create value for them. I want our customers to know Cloudera as the most flexible data concierge service that they can rely on to run their workloads without having to worry about the forklift and the left shifts and then, you know, yeah. those are the things that the customer shouldn't have to do. It shouldn't have to have an army of people moving workloads on the cloud or from the cloud on-prem or even in the worst case scenario from one kind of public cloud to another public cloud. Yeah, I think you nailed it. I mean, I set up on stage, you know, Dan started off, you know, the cloud's 15 years old. Yeah, it's a teenager, right? And uh, in the end of today here in 2024, what enterprises want is they want software capabilities that are cross cloud, okay? And whether that's a sovereign cloud, a private cloud, on-prem for mainframes, as, as Charles has talked about a few times, public cloud, and also the ability to get SaaS uh, data. And it's even more important here in, in the age of generative AI, for sure. Speaking of AI, I mean, I think we would be missing an opportunity if we didn't talk on every single show ever about, but seriously, one of the biggest, most prolific and important trends that's going to transform every business immediately. And it's all about driving productivity, it's about driving efficiency, but you know, I'll be candid, seven, eight months ago, nobody at Cloudera was really using AI as a term. It was like, almost there was like this resistance to really go down the path, and despite big data and, its, and the important yeah. shift it was making towards AI, it's this new team that's coming in, yourself included, that's really kind of grabbing the ball and saying, we want to be differentiated, we want to be part of an AI conversation, but I still think there's an opportunity to tell people what that means. Tell us a little bit about how you are seeing through product and through the innovation you're developing, uh, Cloudera becoming a real player, being a, you know one of the first off the tongue when it comes to companies' AI strategy. Great question. I love talking about this because really it's going to happen at three, at, at three different layers at Cloudera. It's already happening. First of all is, automation. AI drives automation beyond the DevOps life cycle. We have started using what we call the AI ops, which actually orchestrates workload, it actually automates testing, and it really gives the team a productivity boost. Anything that is scriptable, anything that is you can have a playbook for, can be automated. And we showed some examples on the stage, live products that are generating code for you, generating test cases for you, giving you the productivity boost, making it easier for us to then get started. That's the automation is the first level. The second one is accuracy. If you apply AI to any software development or any other manufacturing, it's not just the speed, it's also the precision that you're able to overachieve. Uh, and that's what AI is capable of doing right now. It gives you a better precision, it gives you better outcomes. And the third area is really um, making the separation between machine learning and AI. Machine learning is, is, is we already have been doing and we are gonna do more of. 
It's all about training the data, training the computer to interact with you, rather than interacting with a computer yourself. If you train it well enough, one machine will interact with the other. And at this very moment, your, your, our, watch, our watch talks to our phone, our phone talks to the, the email server. That's a closed loop system, but you can go fairly pervasive in, in, in that and having multiple devices talk to each other. And this is where the line becomes very blurry between man-machine interaction. And we want to be the company that's known for you know, automating software infrastructure for our customers not only for our for their software but also about their hardware on prem and and off prem as well so can we do a double click on this and maybe connect the dots between the data and, and ai i mean just try to be you know as as black and white as possible here how does your platform make ai better because it starts with you know ai foundation is data quality, data completeness, data accuracy, data freshness. So we have to get the data strategy in place first. That's the journey, it's phase number one. Next phase is picking a model that best suits you from whether we are offering customer choices or whether they can use an open source model or closed source model. What we are seeing is you've almost, unless you have a lot of ton of budget to hand pick and create a model from scratch, it gets very expensive because you have to train the model on billions and billions of, that's B with a billion parameters. You're better off starting with a model that is close enough and then you start from there to fine tune it. Once you fine tune the model, and you've gotten it to be good enough for your needs. If you start interrogating the model, you start training the model, it's become your proprietary IP. At that point, you own that, and you can then put it behind uh, your, your air-gapped systems. Most of our large customers who are already on the AI journey, mm -hmm. they are looking at starting with an open source, iteratively training, and taking it to the closed source. And given our open source heritage, I see us doing this better than any other company, that we start with open source community and we build a community of really set of models that are shared assets and to the point where that's your customers, are, are really our customers prior to proprietary model. And they use that as their differentiator. Of one would you know, say that once the proprietary models are ready, they wouldn't want to share that with anyone, and not even our vendor. And I want to have that separation between models that they have created using Cloudera as a platform versus, you know, using models that are available in the open source community. Yeah, Dipto, I appreciate you going that deep. I'll tell you something, um, you know, we went on stage and the first slide was something along the lines of the more things change, the more things stay the same. And what I'm hearing from you is sort of a reiteration of the fact that, you know, the, the complexity of getting your data right is only being amplified in the era. And whether it's trying to build a foundational model, a small model, a large model, it's all about having your data compliant, governed, available, right? And, and so this is where Cloudera has such an opportunity to shine, is that companies can't do the cool stuff without doing the hygiene. And so, if anything, this whole AI trend is only amplified substantially, increased the need exponentially for the tools that you've built and offered for the hybrid multi-cloud era. So it seems like you're very well set. Um, of course, now you got to execute. We are excited to get on it. I've been seeing some awesome results because some of these uh, models that we have demonstrated yesterday, you know, the amount of effort and the, and the uh, to, to really bring it from inception to delivery we're talking days or weeks, no more than that. And I think speed will be the number one differentiator. And I, I go back on this thesis of making things simple is hard, and we are doing that heavy lift for our customers, and making things easy for them so that, you know, keeping things simple will be hard and making things complicated will be very, very easy in a I business where yeah. our typical customer profiles, they have multiple cloud providers, they have multiple public cloud providers, yes. they have multiple storage suppliers. So they're dealing with a very complex ecosystem. And us making that investment and being their preferred vendor that who knows how to deal with complexity, that gives them a whole carousel of choices. And if they rely on Cloudera product suite, we will be in the winning place. That I want to be that 
tool of choice that they use us to lift and shift and also run their business. Right. Making things easy is hard. Making things hard is easy. Divto, I want to thank you so much for joining us here on the 6.5. It was delighted to be here. Thank you for spending time with me. Thank you. I got an easy one for all of you. Hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you as part of the 6.5 community. And of course, watch all of our coverage here at Elevate 25 north of miami south of fort lauderdale here at the sko and yes that is fiscal year 25. we appreciate everybody tuning in but we got to say goodbye for now see you later